Folks, Street Fighter 6 is coming down the horizon, and I'm really excited, just like everyone else it seems like, but I have heard some people have a bit of trepidation about the fact that there are people out there who have, you know, years or decades of experience playing Street Fighter games. They know so much that it's going to be really, really hard to catch up as a new player. So uh, after hearing this, I decided maybe it would be a good idea to make a video where I'll go over some of the things that I feel like veteran Street Fighter players all kind of know and that you're gonna wanna know so that you'll be ready for Street Fighter VI when it finally comes out. So we're gonna be taking a look. These are six tricks or tips or techniques that you're gonna wanna know before Street Fighter VI because trust me, the veteran Street Fighter players already know about this, so you're gonna wanna help catch up to them by learning some of these tricks yourself. And if you like this video, if you like this style of content, it would really help me out if you could press the like button and subscribe if you're not already. Maybe just double check, because every time I say this, I know a lot of people go, oh, I thought I was subscribed, but it turns out I'm not actually, so just double check. But with that, let's get into the list. All right, so first up, I want to talk about the Dragon Punch. So you guys might know the Dragon Punch, one of the most powerful moves in Street Fighter. Partially, one of the reasons for this is its use as an anti-air. So anti-airing, really important in Street Fighter, and it seems like in 6, basically every character is going to have some move that is going to be like their designated anti-air that is going to be invincible to airborne attacks. And for a lot of characters, this is a dragon punch. But something I feel like happens with a lot of people is they're like sitting here, they're like crouching, and they're like, okay, I'm ready. The opponent's going to jump at me, and I'm going to anti-air it. But then, you know, by the time the opponent jumps, you know, they have to move the stick from down back to forward to down to down forward. It's kind of a, a difficult input for some people to do with the quick speed that you need to successfully anti-air. So ever since Street Fighter 4, there's been an easier way to do this. You can actually do a dragon punch without leaving crouch. All you have to do is go down, down forward, down, down forward. So basically, if we imagine the numpad notation, you just go from two to three, and you can just do this back and forth. And anytime you press punch, you're gonna get a dragon punch. So you can use this to really quickly get dragon punches from crouching. So this is going to make it way easier for you to do these last second, like just in time, hit the opponent with a dragon punch when they're jumping at you. So this is a much easier way to get a fast reaction dragon punch. And I think it's something you're going to want to be ready for when Street Fighter VI rolls around. While we're on the subject of dragon punches, let me talk about another very, very useful dragon punch tip here. So you can see what Blanca is doing here is called a cross up. He's jumping over me and he's hitting me on the back. And cross ups are pretty tricky because you're going to have to switch which direction you're blocking. You have to hold forward instead of holding back because the enemy changes sides with you. So the other useful thing about cross ups is they're pretty hard to anti -air. You can see if I try a dragon punch, I'm just going to go sailing the wrong way and look like an idiot and probably get punished. So cross-ups can be pretty annoying when the opponent is just staying close to you and doing repeated cross-ups. But again, ever since Street Fighter 4, there's been a pretty easy way. Maybe in the older games this works, but Street Fighter 4 is the first place I saw it. There's a thing called cross-cut DP. So I'm going to do a pretty complex motion here. You guys see what I did? I'll try to show you in slow motion. So the inputs that I'm doing... I'm doing forward, down forward, down, down back, and then punch. So it's like that. So basically imagine we start at forward and then we roll the stick down to down back. So if you kind of think about how the inputs are working, right? So the first input of Dragon Punch is forward. So we're pressing forward. Second input of Dragon Punch is down. We're pressing down because we're, we're kind of rolling through down from forward. And then the third input of Dragon Punch is down forward. But because Blanca crosses over us, we actually want to press down back because down back becomes down forward because we change sides. So hopefully you're able to kind of picture that visually in your head, why that works. So that's called a cross cut DP and this is going to be invaluable for people who just like crossing you up all the time. Uh, go ahead and hit them with the cross cut and make them stop doing that. And uh, they'll have to think twice about just repeatedly jumping because that can be a pretty annoying tactic to deal with. All right, that's enough about Dragon Punches. Let's talk a little bit about throws. One of the most important moves in Street Fighter by far is the throw. But have you ever fought someone where it just feels like you cannot throw them? Like every time you go for a throw, they end up teching it. And it's like, how are they so consistent with the throw techs? Like, what are they doing that they, you know, you can't react to throw. It's five frames in Street Fighter 6. That's unreactable. So how does someone tech a throw every single time? And the answer is they're probably doing something that we call throw tech option select, or we also call it late tech, 
or people also call it fuzzy throw tech, which is kind of a crazy name. But anyway, I'm just going to call it late tech here. I think that's what people kind of called it. When I was playing Street Fighter 4, people would say late tech, which basically means you're kind of throwing like in time with the opponent's attacks, except you're doing it like a little bit late. So you, generally the opponent is going to throw you and then you're going to tech like right after the throw hits. So basically what we're doing here is after we block an attack, we wait just like a little bit. We wait like, I don't know, a half second or something. And then we press throw tech. So you can see this even works on like multi-hit block strings. I'm just timing throw tech, you know, just pressing it a little bit delayed after each attack and we're getting the throw tech there and because there's no gap in the opponent's block string nothing bad happens to me here i don't get hit even though i'm pressing buttons so this is a really really valuable tool just for getting past like the first layer of throw mix up if you're a beginner and you're fighting a fellow beginner this is probably going to work really really well against them because they're not going to be advanced enough to mix up their throw timings or to mix in what's called a frame trap so i'll explain to you a frame trap real quick a frame trap is where you deliberately leave a gap in your block string. So our gap there was down jab into down heavy punch. And that gap is gonna be just long enough that the opponent is gonna have time to press a button and get hit. So if we're doing what we were doing and we're delaying our throw tech there, you can see we are gonna get completely blasted by that down fierce because there's enough of a gap for my throw tech to come out and get me killed. Or if I press any kind of button here, like let me just mash buttons, you can see I'm definitely gonna get blown up by that gap. So frame traps are there to keep your opponent from pressing buttons while they're blocking, and throws are there to stop the opponent from just blocking and not pressing buttons. So it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors situation. Hopefully you can see. All right, next up, let's talk about Kara canceling. So I feel like Kara canceling sounds really, really complicated, but it's actually not that much. Basically, Kara cancel means empty cancel, literally. And what it means is you're canceling the empty frames of an attack. Like before the attack comes out, you cancel those frames into another attack, like a special move or a super or a throw. So the most easy example to see here is gonna be Sagat. You can see he has this forward light kick. We can cancel the move before it comes out into a special move. So this is gonna give us a ton of extra range on our attacks because we get those early frames of the forward light kick where he's walking forward. So Sagat is like definitely the easiest character to test this with. But probably the most common usage of Kara canceling in Street Fighter is gonna be Kara throws. So imagine, you know, we saw that forward movement of the early frames of Sagat's forward light kick. Imagine if we applied that to a throw so we could give our throw extra range. And it turns out in most Street Fighter games, you can do this. So like Ken, his forward medium kick, he walks forward to do it and we can cancel that into a throw. So you can see if you just mash throw, we don't move anywhere. But if we car a throw, we move forward every time. So all of a sudden, you know, we're outside of throw range here, but we're very much inside car throw range. So Ken has like probably the craziest car throw in Street Fighter 4, but I think every character has at least one. So from what we've seen, I'm not sure if Kara throwing is actually in Street Fighter 6. It seems like you can definitely cancel the startup of moves into throw, but you might not get any extra range. I think we're going to have to wait and see maybe once we start getting command throw characters because there weren't really any grapplers in the beta. That could change. But there are some tricks already being found with Kara canceling in Street Fighter 6. This is from Tragic, who's kind of a, a classic uh, tech guy in fighting games. And here you can see canceling the startup of the second hit of his target combo is gonna change the spacing and give his projectiles more advantage because he's gonna be a little bit further back. So this is like a super, super niche thing, but I imagine if people are already finding this for Guile, there's probably gonna be tricks like this found for other characters as well. So I just wanna get you familiar with the idea of car canceling. It's kind of a high level technique, but uh, it's gonna be something you might wanna look into when Street Fighter VI finally comes out. All right, next up, I wanna talk a little bit about safe jumps. So you may know in Street Fighter, one of the core fundamental principles is pressing your advantage on knockdown. When you knock the opponent down, you are at advantage because the opponent can't do anything until they get back up. So you should press that advantage and try to keep the momentum and keep your offensive pressure going. That is in general just fundamental in Street Fighter. But here's the problem. People have invincible moves that are just gonna go through whatever you try to do. So it's like, okay, I have to kind of guess on the opponent's wake up because I have to guess whether they're gonna block or press a button or do an invincible move. It can feel kind of bad. And so that's why we have a very special technique called safe jumping. So, okay, I'm not gonna press anything here. You can see Ryu's doing a jump in into a combo. What happens if I flash kick? What the heck, he blocked it. 
How did he? This is a CPU recording, so he's doing the same inputs here. You can see he's 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 doing the combo, and yet he still blocks the flash kick. How does he do that? That is actually it's it's a safe jump. It's a type of option select. I don't want to get completely into what option selects are in this video, but essentially he's doing one set of inputs. He's doing the same inputs every time. It's a dummy recording. And yet he can get two different outcomes. He can get either a block or a combo, depending on whether I do a wake up flash kick or not. So that's a safe jump. So the idea behind it is pretty straightforward. You essentially want to be like landing on the opponent right as they get up. So like, you know, every move has frames before it comes out, before it becomes active. So Guile's flash kick, you know, while it's still becoming active, while he's waking up, uh, I'm going to have time to land and block in case my jumping heavy kick whiffs because of his invincibility. So I, I feel like when I said that, it, it sounded a little bit overly complicated. But essentially, the idea is you just want to jump at the opponent while they're waking up and hit them at the last possible second before you land. So in older games, some moves are really, really easy to get a safe jump off of. With Ryu and Street Fighter 4, you just hold up forward after a sweep. You just get a sweep and hold up forward, and it's automatically a safe jump. The timing just works out that way. Some moves, you might have to be a little bit more creative, you know, like if I land a throw and just hold up forward, it's way too early. So maybe instead we'll have to like walk back a step and then jump in. Let's set the dummy to play back and make sure that that's actually a safe jump that I pulled off. Let me see. It could be pretty hard to like manually time these, but yeah, there you go. You can see that is in fact a safe jump. I think sometimes people have like little tricks that they do, like they whiff a couple attacks and then do the jump to like time it. They figure out what attacks they have to do to make the timing work. So those are called frame kills. There's a couple tricks like that, but generally, you know, safe jumps are a really useful thing to know because they let you pressure the opponent while they're waking up without having to worry about getting hit by an invincible dragon punch or something like that. So uh, from what we've seen, it doesn't seem like there are a ton of safe jumps in Street Fighter 6. You get them off of stuff like punish counter sweep will give you a safe jump. And then certain moves that launch the opponent really high, like EX Tatsu or something like that, those can give you safe jumps in 6 as well. So there aren't that many setups for safe jumps, but they are extremely powerful. Because in a lot of games, like Street Fighter 4, for example, you have different speeds of wake up. So you can get up with delayed wake up and then you're going to stay down on the ground longer. Whereas if you get up with normal wake up, you're going to get up a little bit faster. So that's just going to completely wreck your safe jump time. And you're still going to have to kind of guess and account for what kind of wake up the opponent's doing. But in Street Fighter 6, there's only one speed of wake up. There's, there's neutral wake up and there's back wake up where you roll back. But they actually are the same speed. So safe jumps will be universal regardless of what type of wake up the opponent does. So if you manage to find some good safe jump setups for your character, they are going to be really, really powerful because there's going to be actually nothing that the opponent can do. They're just going to have to block and take it. So yeah, safe jumps, super important part of the Street Fighter experience and something you're going to want to learn if you're a new player who hasn't played these old games that much. All right, I got one more little tip for you guys. You ever watch someone play and they do something insane, like they just randomly do crouching medium kick into dragon punch and it just works? And you're like, how did they know that that was gonna hit? Like if the opponent blocked that, they would just die, right? So uh, how are they brave enough to throw out something so scary? Well, the reason is called, they're doing what's called buffering. So the idea behind buffering is we're doing the dragon punch. We're doing the dragon punch every time, right? You can see on my inputs, I'm, I'm doing a dragon punch behind this crouching medium kick, but it doesn't come out because I'm still in the middle of my medium kick. But if the medium kick connects, it does come out because of special canceling. So all of a sudden, if the opponent's walking around, we know if the opponent's walking forward, you know, you can't block while you're walking forward. So if they're walking forward and I'm just like throwing this out, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna land the combo if it hits them. So of course, this also works with supers. You can just you can just do your super behind the crouching medium kick and it'll only come out if the crouching medium kick actually connects with the opponent. So this is gonna be really important in six, I think, because you know you got three different supers and unlike Street Fighter four and five where you can use your super meter to do EX moves, in Street Fighter six, you can only use super meter for supers. That's all it's for. So you're gonna wanna land those supers and not just like sit on your meter forever not using it. So being able to confirm into super off of just stray hits like this, uh, it's not a confirm. I shouldn't say it's a confirm, but it's gonna be, you know, a way of landing the super that is not going to really put you at risk because, again, if this whiffs, nothing bad happens. And if it hits, we're going to get the combo. So it's a really, really important tactic 
that you're gonna want and it's gonna make you look like a footsies god you know if you're just if you're just playing the game and you just randomly blast the opponent with you know a crazy combo like this out in neutral while they're trying to walk around uh yeah you're gonna feel really amazing so uh, definitely a useful tactic, buffering a special move behind your normals in neutral. Uh, it's also especially useful as a beginner because most people aren't going to know how to deal with this. I would say there's two kind of good answers if the opponent's doing this. One is just to walk forward and block. It might not work every time because you might still get hit while you're walking forward if you get unlucky. But if you just walk forward and block, you know, a lot of times the opponent is going to just completely screw themselves over and leave themselves in a bad spot by doing a blocked special move. Or if you see that the opponent is going for this, it's like obvious they're like whiffing attacks. You can go for a whiff punish here. Just wait for the attack and then hit them while it's recovering. Or, you know, you can whiff punish with like the same buffer type deal that they're trying to do to you. You know, you can whiff punish like that. So uh, whiffing attacks, it's not risk free. There is a decent amount of risk associated with whiffing attacks. But, you know, if it's light normals and medium normals, generally nothing too bad is going to happen uh, unless you get really, really predictable and the opponent starts to see it coming. So... Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole buffering idea behind your normals is going to be super useful in Street Fighter 6. I guarantee it. But with that, guys, that's going to be it for the video. I had a really fun time putting this video together and coming up with some of these things that I feel like I take for granted as someone who's been playing Street Fighter games uh, for over like 10 years now. There's stuff that you just know, but you don't even think about that much because it's just second nature. So if you guys have any questions or things that are like, hey, I've always wondered why do Street Fighter players do this or that? How do they do this certain thing? Uh, and you're wanting to get prepped for Street Fighter 6 or you just want to go back and play some 2, 3, 4, or 5, uh, let me know down in the comments. I definitely will be reading those and checking them out and responding to any questions that I feel uh, could be helpful for people. So with that, we're going to end the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.